iz ovih primjera treba primetiti da poslovni modeli utiču značajno na vrednost firme. Sedam od deset najvrednijih kompanija u svetu koriste poslovni model platforme. Zato smo pozvali u goste Sanjit Paul Chauderia, autora dve knjige o platformama, autora i koautora mnogo članaka u Harvard Business Review, MIT Technology Review, Forbesu i mnogim drugim publikacijama. U 2017. godini on je izabran za jednog od 100 mladih globalnih lidera od strane World Economic Forum-a, a njegov rad sa kolegama je izabran za jedan od deset definitivno management ideja godine od strane Harvard Business Review-a. I on je verovatno najcenjeniji ekspert iz ove oblasti platforme i digitalnog poslovnog modela. As a first thing is, uh, all of this is coming because of digital revolution. All of this what you are doing, and Absolutely. I must say you published two books which are actually the leading books about the platforms. One is digital platforms, one is the platform scale, mm -hmm. which are very popular. <laughs> and uh, I must say I enjoyed uh, reading these books. And uh, can you explain to our viewers a little bit about uh, the digital revolution and digital business models? What we've seen over the last uh, decade and a half is that uh, the fundamentals of business are shifting because of the abundance of data that the digital revolution is bringing in, as well as the fact that because we are connected, we can now reorganize the entire value chains, we can reorganize the way value flows in our business model. And that is what is leading us to a shift in the shape of business models. Traditionally, the businesses that we've seen have all been what I think of as straight line businesses or pipeline businesses, where you have a producer who creates value, who then ships it, and then somebody gets it at the end, who we call the customer. And in our daily lives, we understand this. When we go to a store, we are receiving something at the end of a pipeline that came from a manufacturing plant. Or if we uh, turn on our TV, uh, we're seeing content that was delivered through a pipeline that is eventually reaching us. So traditionally, that was the way business was created. And the reason for that was that we needed the big factory model. We needed the industrial model of bringing a lot of people together, m uh, ensuring that we market a product and ensuring that that product is eventually bought. What is changing now because of data, because of connectivity, and because of this reorganization that happens is that now we are seeing new business models that are no longer the straight line business models. Instead, now the business brings together different kinds of parties. It can bring together other companies. It can bring together other users who can create value. And it brings all of them together onto one single platform and allows them to create and exchange value with each other. So if you look at any industry today, uh, every industry has the potential to move from this straight line, pipeline-based business model to a platform-based business model. Uh, some of the common examples that we see today are uh, the examples that we see in the media industry, for example, where traditional television has always worked in this pipeline model, but YouTube uh, works in a platform model, or traditional publishing has worked in a pipeline model, Amazon works on a platform-based model. But what is exciting is that it's not just these few digital startups uh, that we see, but that this change is possible in every industry going forward. We're already seeing even traditional industries like the construction industry, for example, where buildings are being constructed on a platform-based model, where companies like Autodesk are creating the building simulation and building design software and uh, allowing users to come together on a platform and coordinate their actions around the software, building marketplaces where you can have uh, contractors working with uh, uh, building equipment providers, construction material providers, and then eventually smart buildings plugging into this platform as well. So you see something as simple as an Amazon disrupting publishing and something as complex as the construction industry. All of these, this whole spectrum is moving into platform-based models today. And where do you see value there? Where is value produced? The value in a platform-based model is produced in understanding the transactions and the interactions between these parties and then 
capturing some of that in the form of revenues. So I'll give you a few examples. One common platform based model is what we think of as the marketplace, where you are creating a market where parties can transact with each other. The simplest example is eBay. But you take that eBay example and take it to any industry, there is the potential to create a marketplace and to bring parties together, facilitate the transaction and make it easier to have the transaction over a common platform. In this case, the value is in aggregation of the market and so the value capture, the revenue happens in the, in the form of a transaction cut. There are other cases where value can be in the, in the form of access of one side of the market to the other side. So if you think of what Facebook does today, uh, it tries to uh, monetize that value in some way. When, when you write a post, it allows uh, your friends to see it. But if you're running a page on Facebook and if you want more people to see that post, it asks you to promote that post. And that promotion is a way of charging for access to a larger market. So these are the ways in which value is created. You uh, either enable transactions, you enable access of one side to the other, or you enable better understanding of one side uh, to the other. So even if you think of uh, platforms where third parties come in and want to access consumers, the more data the platform has, the more it can charge the third parties for accessing these consumers. And these are the common ways in which value gets created. Is that also the result of that, that we do not have enough platforms? Because if there will be new platforms bringing the bigger value, they would compete with Amazon. I was always thinking that if uh, the small countries, the or Vienna as a city um, would uh, have their own kind of Amazon platform, they c could compete with Amazon because they de can deliver the things faster. And um, that would be the competition to the Amazon. But we don't see that at the moment. What I'm beginning to see now is that regulators are beginning to take notice of this. And so we are entering in, uh, an uh, age, if I could call it that, uh, as a, at least a brief period, where regulation is becoming more fragmented. And that is probably in the short term the only way to combat these big companies. Uh, if you look at the EU, e the EU is creating its own single digital market and it's creating its own data residency laws, uh, which can prevent, say, an Amazon or a Facebook from operating easily over here. Uh, companies like Google are already facing uh, issues with that because uh, they cannot use uh, the data from outside the EU to, to train uh, algorithms here or the data from the EU to train their algorithms outside. And so they're targeting capabilities are, are, are reducing as well. So in the short term, I really see that as the advantage that some countries will have, where they will enable their homegrown startups to compete with the big guys by creating uh, uh, regulation favorable to these, uh, uh, to these startups. And this is what I think of as regulatory arbitrage, where uh, you are winning not because your business model is superior, but because you play with the regulations better. So. As regulation starts becoming more fragmented, we might start seeing some of uh, this kind of competition going forward. Which would be also good for our region because there are a lot of separate countries that are belonging to EU or that are even having a laws that you have to keep the data, customer data in your own country, which would help them to do it. But still, it, we don't see too many of these startups going into really into something which we can call local monopoly. Because of the idea of network effects, uh, where the more users use your platform, the more useful the platform becomes, you need a minimum critical mass, you need a minimum number of users. And what happens is that when we think of Austria, a country of less than 10 million people, it's, it cannot have the kind of network effects that the US or China can have with their hundreds of millions of people. and what that might end up meaning is that for certain kinds of business models, the platform that has less than a certain number of users may not be that useful uh, in the first place. Uh, there are certain business models like, say, you know, Uber or BlaBlaCar, which are 
uh, where you can operate at the city level or the intercity level so you don't really need to be international to be big in fact if you look at uber uh, in most geographies their competitors are now doing better than them especially in asia uh, and what that shows is that there are certain kinds of businesses where local platforms may have an advantage but there might be certain kinds of businesses where the global platform may have a much bigger advantage and uh, networking and uh, you know the f Facebooks and LinkedIn's of the world are a classic example of that where no amount of local regulation uh, would break the network effect the the local regulation may impact some parts of their business it may make the advertising less effective but the platform will still end up being global so I believe what's important is that local startups will have to pick and choose what kind of platforms they want to build at the local level versus participate at the global level. But you know the example, you know that uh, they are saying that actually the best salesman in the world was the one who sold the first telephone right. because this network eff effect didn't exist. So if you were the first one to buy the telephone, you could not <laughs> even speak to somebody else. So that, that's, it, a li that's a line from my book, yes. Yes, uh, that's a line from your book correctly. And uh, the same thing is with the local startups. See, they have to start, you know, this, this is probably the most difficult um, step in towards uh, getting the platform even on the local level so what you would uh, uh, then uh, what kind of advice you will give to these startups what has to be the first step towards the platform all platforms start small when we think of platforms when we see platforms around us we see these big companies which are in the top 10 foot uh, of the fortune 500 these are all these are all part of the 10 largest companies in the world facebook google amazon microsoft but if you look at some of these examples facebook started as a small social network within harvard university only google started as a search engine only before it moved into everything including self-driving cars amazon started by just being a bookseller and is now competing with FedEx and logistics and all it's it's creating an infrastructure for the internet with AWS what's important is that every platform starts and is successful because of focus if it tries to do everything from day one it will never build the network effect it needs to focus on exactly one problem for a particular kind of user build network effects in that particular space and then extend expand from there and the reason for this is that when you are uh, early on when you are when you are constrained uh, constrained on resources it's important to ensure that you target a very small market where there is a high deal of activity between the producers and the consumers if you take the amazon example if amazon on d1 had tried to do uh, books as well as uh, electronics as well as five other categories uh, building enough network effects would have been a problem because they would have needed more um, producers and more consumers before everybody found what they were looking for but by focusing on books they were able to start with a few producers and a few consumers who are very interested in books and then they expanded from there and that's what's important even if you look at the facebook example if they had built a global social network they may never have competed with myspace but by creating something for the very small closed market they were able to saturate it and then saturate many other markets so entrepreneurs there's actually a good message over here whether entrepreneurs or incumbents there's actually a good message over here in the sense that starting small is actually an advantage initially what's important is that you use that advantage gained and figure out how to scale the network effect from there how to spill into new markets how to use the data from the first segment to attract uh, another set of parties to the platform and then expand further from there so that's that's what's important but starting small is actually a good thing here Sanjit, thank you very much. It was a pleasure having you and thank you for being our guest today. Thank you. Pleasure being here.